Hey guys, and welcome back to the Entrepreneurs Podcast. My name is Waylon, and together with Ali, we are the co host of the Entrepreneurs Podcast, the podcast for and by women entrepreneurs. Every week, we share insightful and inspiring conversations with women entrepreneurs from around the world to share their entrepreneurial journeys. To check out our past episodes and be notified of our future ones, subscribe to us on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us right now. Get ready for a wonderful episode, and we can't wait to see you at the end. Hello, and welcome back to the Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today, we are literally so excited to have Kara on here today. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. We are so excited to have you on to chat about everything from Hint, your entrepreneurial journey, the Kara Golding Show, just everything. Um, so to start us off, as we always ask our guests, love to ask you, what is something that excites you when you wake up in the morning? So I just love the idea of having a new day. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a morning person. They always say, are you a night owl or a morning person? I'm definitely a morning person. And I think for me, the first thing that I want to do is get outside. And so I love nature. In fact, I'm, I'm such a proponent that it's something that I think is undervalued by so many people uh, that just the idea of no matter what, I try and start my day on a hike or um, I just get outside as fast as I can. No matter what the weather is, I'm constantly just, you know, about living and about seeing what's going on outside. I absolutely love that. It's so weird because I feel like the correlation between having a good day and me going outside first thing in the morning is so oh, causally yeah. related. Like the days where I'm like, I wake up and I go straight to work are probably some of my worst days, but the days where I like actually take some time to like go outside and like see nature and like just like be outside off my phone are definitely some of my better days recently. Yeah, even yeah. the sunlight as well. Like humans are like plants, like we need to photosynthesize. Like I say it as a joke, but I truly mean it. Like getting the sunlight, vitamin D, it's so important. It's so important. I think growing up in Arizona, I just, I mean, it's very much an indoor outdoor life. And so mm -hmm. I think I got it there, like where that had to, I was always getting outside. My parents definitely told me to go outside and I was constantly, um, you know, fine. A lot of my sports and activities were outdoors. So I moved to New York and moved to Northern California where the weather is different from Arizona for sure. But I think it, it really, I totally agree with you. I think it's just the more you can actually embrace nature and you just see different things uh, along the way that it just, it really helps you. It helps your mindset. It sort of changes things up a lot. You know, you're not staring at a screen or talking mm -hmm. EBITDA or whatever you're, you know, doing, um, dealing with children uh, in, in my case over the years of, you know, like helping them uh, you know, get on with their day. I think that if you start your day in this way where you're, you know, really get your mindset right, that it's, um, you know, some days it, it still will end up to be a challenging day, um, but it, you can actually set your head um, in the right direction. 100%. I'd love to ask you a little bit about your childhood as well. You said you grew up in Arizona and I've seen a lot of just of the wonderful work you've done. But again, a lot of who we are now is stemming from who we were as a child. So I'd love to ask you about any sort of entrepreneurial spirits or entrepreneurial um, figures that inspired you growing up or like who was an influential figure? You know, it's, it's really interesting. I remember when my book came out um, about a year ago, I heard from a friend of mine who was a childhood friend uh, who were friends on Facebook. And she said, your first job was actually not in a, in a toy store that I talk about in the book. She said, your first actual job where you earn money um, beyond babysitting was we started a camp together and I just died. I, I remember this camp so well when I was 12. And it was in the middle of the summer. It was like 115 degrees in Arizona. And I wanted to start this camp because I wanted to make money to go to the mall and go shopping. And, and I had older brothers and sisters who had jobs. And, and so they had a lot more money than me. That was the way that my world um, kind of seemed. Um, it seemed unfair to me and I couldn't get a job. And so I was like, I'm just going to like start my own business and I'm going to start a I'm going to start a camp. 
And I called Robin and I said, Robin, you want to start a camp with me? And she said, sure. And she came over and she's like, what are we going to do at the camp? And I said, okay, we're going to go to Safeway and the grocery store. And we're going to uh, get a bunch of like really large boxes, like from paper towels. They always have these giant boxes mm -hmm. and we're going to connect them and we're going to build a city. And she said, wow, like, that seems like a lot of boxes. And I'm like, okay, let's build a town. It, we, we're not going to build a city. We're going to build a town. And she's like, but where are we going to do it? And I'm like, in the backyard. We'll just connect him and we'll invite these kids over and we'll all like create this amazing town. And they'll color things. We'll have paint out. It'll be really, really fun. She's like, okay, but who are the kids? And I'm like, okay. So we're going to use some of the cardboard and we're going to create a sign and we're going to go to the corner. Can you imagine today? Like we held up wow. a sign and it. we said, and we'll take your said, kids. We'll take your kids. <laughs> we're like, no one knows us, but we just laughed about it. We were like, okay, we'll take your kids. And she said, how many kids are we going to take? I don't know. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just get a <laughs> few now. And, um, and then she said, what are we going to charge? And I said, five dollars five dollars a day and she said uh, okay like is that the right price i don't know but let's just put five dollars mm -hmm. on the sign see what's happening <laughs> so, so we did and people were like how long are you going to do this for i don't know like a few weeks and we <laughs> going for the six weeks and we were totally sold out people told their friends i mean it was just it was insane and and so it's funny because I think my brother, who was 15 years older than me, I, again, I think he really, I, I just kept watching him. He had a painting business during the summer. He went to law mm -hmm. school, but he wasn't working while he was in school. And so like, he would always start these little businesses. And so I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. I mean, why not? But I just thought it was so funny that Robin reminded me because I didn't even think that that was, you know, an entrepreneurial idea sometimes when you look back and you look at these you know the signs were all there like i was definitely yeah. an entrepreneur in the making but i i mean i told everybody i was going to go to law school and probably because of my brother um but i i had no i i mean now my kids laugh at me they're like i can't even imagine you in law school i mean i married <laughs> a lawyer but i i they're like i can't even imagine that you would go there like why did you even think that you would go to law school and like ah like i just watched my brother and i was i think i was also just a sponge for information and i was really intrigued by the cases that he was working on or whatever but yeah. going back to you know the the um the the camp situation i think for me it was it was uh definitely a it, that was kind of the first moment where i just figured it out and um and how to build a business and and you know sometimes too i think that when you actually just go try something and a lot of my spirit of you know we didn't know what the pricing should be we didn't i mean i didn't know anything about advertising i knew a few kids around the neighborhood i didn't really know younger kids um to get to you know come to this camp but i just thought i'll just put the sign up i mean it'll either happen or it won't but i won't be any you know, worse behind than I am today. I don't have any money to go to the mall with. And so I, if nobody comes, I, I'll still not have any money. But sometimes you just have to just put yourself out there. You just have to go try stuff. You, you know, learn things along the way. Um, and, you know, I think you, you lead more than anything and you just go try it and you don't take yourself so seriously either. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. were, you know, really fun times. I remember we had the town pretty much built and something that anyone who grows up in Arizona or any communities that have irrigation know that all of a sudden, like we hadn't planned for irrigation and the, <laughs> and the whole, all of our creation was getting ruined. And, and so mm -hmm. it was, um, that was pretty much the end of uh, camp at that point. So we just like said, oh, well, let's move on. Let's go and do something else. And so we decided it was it was the end of the summer. So. Until summer 2022. Signups do start right now for the Kara Golden Cam version oh, two. Totally. <laughs> 
I absolutely love it when entrepreneurs bring us to like the first little inklings of their entrepreneurial journey. I think it's so cool to just see like where you were back then and like these little seedlings of the way you think, the way you answer those questions to all the way now where you have so many successful businesses. So I kind of want to dive a little deeper into the current endeavors that you are spending a lot of your time in. What would you say are your main buckets that take up a lot of your time? And like walk us through like a little intro of who you are as an entrepreneur today. Well, I started Hint almost 17 years ago now. And um, it was, uh, you know, really driven out of a a passion, a curiosity to create a drink that didn't have sweeteners in it. And I was not a beverage executive. I wasn't a food executive either. I'd been in tech, um, had been at America Online. I was not an entrepreneur. I worked for entrepreneurs. Um, So again, looking back, I think that was a definite advantage for me that I had worked for entrepreneurs who took risks, who, you know, I didn't do, I wasn't there because I thought, okay, I'm going to learn from them and I'm going to go and start my own thing, which is one way to do it. But for me, I really thought, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to work on cool things that I think are really interesting that I can have impact and add some kind of value doing. And, and then when I took a break, um, to have my kids, that's when I thought I'm going to, I mean, I should just go start this, this company. And I actually, I don't even think it was. I'm going to go start this company because that's really scary. It's even scary yeah. to, me to say that. I think for me, I thought I'm going to get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods. Mm. Right. And that is, I mean, you think about those two statements. I'm going to get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods or I'm going to go start a company. Like, which would you choose? Right. You're yeah. I'm going to get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. That's like, it sounds way less scary. Tangible. But even when people, when I got the product on on the shelf at Whole Foods and friends of mine who knew me from tech said to me, oh my gosh, that's so cool that you started a company. I'm like, Mm. I I mean, I I don't, I mean, wait, Mm -hmm. what? I started. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked for companies. They do millions of dollars in business. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, just sold a bottle for, you know, a dollar. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, this is not really a company. I was always under kind of valuing sort of what we were doing. And so sometimes I think that if you think too much about the end, you'll never get past the beginning, right? You freak yourself out. Um, And, you know, I think people have always said, like, have you always been like that? I think anyone who's been in I, I would go as far as to say competition, um, yeah. of sport, but I think for me, it was athletics, but you know, one of my kids is a big debater and I think he would feel yeah. the same way about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like you you basically, you know, if you overthink like, or you sit here and say, what if I lose, you don't, I mean, you shouldn't even go in to the situation like that. Instead, you really have to think about what can I do? What can I control? Mm. And you kind of get your head around that, right? And it's the same thing, I think, in starting a company. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, you psych yourself out um, and y- you're not going to go very far because you've just, you're thinking about the wrong things. And that's why thinking about every single day, how do I get through today? You have a, it doesn't mean that you don't have a long term goal. I always say maybe you keep it high on a shelf somewhere where you can see it, but it's sort of hard to see or hard to reach. Um, But you just try to figure out how do you, um, you know, move forward and make progress every single day. And then finally I'll say, and then you go back and you celebrate what you have achieved and think about those Mm -hmm. times when maybe you didn't think, you know, you were going to, um, place in, in that tournament or that competition. Um, but you did right. And how good it felt to be able to do it. Or maybe you didn't expect a lot of people who were way better than you, who had practiced a lot more, who really knew the content, whatever it is, they actually showed up and, you know, you lost, but you, but it better prepared you for the next thing that you do, because you didn't want to lose again, right? You had that feeling of being embarrassed, whatever, like disappointment. And you thought, okay, 
I want to find the light. I don't want to feel that anymore. So I'm going to change that. That is the successful person, right? That they, that they don't sit there and stop on yeah. their fear um, or, you know, their challenge. Instead, they, they figure out how do I get through it and not allow that to happen again. I love yeah, everything about that I think speaks to both Waylon and myself, even personally as well. When you're trying to build something, it feels like nothing or you undervalue that. But then there comes a point where you realize how valued you are and also what you're creating and how it impacts the people. So I'd love to ask you a little bit about your experience with Hint in particular, with where you were or how you felt in the moment where you went from it's a dollar bottle of water, for lack of better terms on Whole Foods, to this is a multi-million dollar company that's impacting the world. What was that moment and mindset switch like to you? And how have you continued to adapt to that same, like that, that same stage as you're growing, but also retain this wonderful grit and this wonderful um, humility that you've shared with us that you've had since the beginning? Oh, thanks. Well, I, I think first of all, for me, it's really helpful to get feedback. And mm -hmm. so I think that when you can have a consumer connection, um, you know, whether it's a, a coach or a teacher when you're younger or, um, you know, in the case of running a, a beverage company like Hint, a consumers who are writing into you. We did something really smart unintentionally um, when we started Hint because everybody in tech was doing this where we put an email on our bottles. No one was doing that. Mm -hmm. And people started to see it on the bottles and they would write to us and they would share with us amazing stories of how they really enjoyed Hint and they wanted to know if we were connected to, you know, Coke or Pepsi. Like they, they want to know more about mm -hmm. the company and the founding story and all of those things. I, I feel like there's a lot of stories like that that have really, um, helped me during those challenging times. Um, you know, also they humble you because not all the stories are, are, you know, great stories. Maybe people have strong opinions about one flavor. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, if they have strong opinions about a flavor, they typically don't like that fruit anyway, which I always think is interesting. Like, why would you yeah. try it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't like, you know, <laughs> if you don't like watermelon, then why would you try water on water? I mean, it just doesn't, no. I don't know, it just doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. But anyway, again, like I think being able to have that kind of consumer connection has really humbled you. But the most important thing is humbling, I should say. The most important thing though, is that um, always be learning. And, and when you have a consumer connection, when you have feedback of some sort, and that is, um, it's a way to get better, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that it also keeps you focused on something, again, going back to something I said earlier, where if you're focused on every day making some kind of progress instead of the dollar signs of, you know, oh my gosh, today we're, you know, $5, uh, we've made $5, today we've made $10,000, today we've made a million dollars, I mean, you can get really caught up in the number stuff and some people do, but instead really focus on, are you satisfying consumers? Are you making progress? Mm -hmm. And that's really the most important part. I love how consumer driven Hint is and how much like that feedback not only played in like those little like inklings. I know when you did the camp, like you were really able to like ask like, is this what people want? And like ask those questions. But now with your um, business and hint, like you're continuously asking and really connecting with your customers, which I think is so important. Um, but you also connect in other ways too, through your podcast and also through your book. What is it like managing so many different aspects and so many different buckets that all kind of rely on you as like the brand identity? And how have you been able to kind of shape your own personal brand identity through all of these like different avenues? I think for me, I never intended um, for things to be kind of centered around, you know, me or, or you know, my brand, my, my mm -hmm. personal brand or um whatever you want to call it. I think for me, it was just a way to share with people what I was doing. I mean, starting with Hint, how like 
it was my own personal story of why I felt like I wanted a drink that didn't have sweeteners in it. And when I gave up Diet Coke, that's when I lost a bunch of weight. I got rid of my, you know, brain fog. I, I just felt better. And Mm -hmm. I would explain that to people again, 17 years ago, and they would just be like, wait, what? I mean, I thought, I thought diet is better for you. And I'm like, I did too. I'd been drinking it for years. I thought that there was this, it's much better for you than regular sugar. And I like Mm -hmm. all these things that had gone through my head. And so by sharing my own aha moments and sharing my story, people started to tell my story and Mm -hmm. they would, you know, we got a ton of press like early on because people would be like, oh my gosh, I need, I write for so-and-so. I want to share the story or whatever it is. So I think like that's how it sort of started and people, you know, like associated with the, with the brand, many of our investors, frankly, were people who heard my story. They heard me from a, you know, article or they heard me speak somewhere and they were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And And frankly, that sort of filtered into people would hear my story and why I decided to start the company. And then they would say, oh, I've had this idea for X business, not even necessarily in food and beverage in some other industry. And I would, you know, connect with them. I'd say, you should go do it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Like, you know, I mean, if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. But I always figured if I failed that I'd probably have something interesting to say at a dinner party. Yeah. You know, people would ask some kind of question and I, and they'd say, what's the craziest thing you've ever, I started beverage company. It, it like, I fell flat on my face and I thought that's, if that's the worst that could happen to me, so what? Like I'll learn some things about yeah. myself, what I like to do what I'm good at. Like, and, and it ends up, I mean, there's so many stories along the way that you, as I always say, like we should have ran the videos to like, the movie throughout this entire mm-hmm. journey of building hint because you can't make some of this stuff up that we've been through. That's lovely. I really resonate like with the story you told about a failure. This podcast actually started as a project almost in a class I was taking about failure where we were exploring what it means to fail, our relationship with failures and how entrepreneurs deal with failure. And so this podcast wouldn't have existed if we didn't tell ourselves, okay, what's the worst case scenario? We tell people we started a podcast. It didn't like become anything. And that's the worst case. And we were both not scared of that worst case. So we were like, why the hell not? And we started this podcast and now we, we have you on the podcast and so many amazing opportunities have come out of it. So I love yeah. your relationship with failure as well. And just like explaining that. Yeah. And it yeah. also makes sense yeah. to me why the word undaunting is so tied to you now. We see it in gorgeous neon lights behind you. We see it with your podcast shows, we see it on your book. How did this word resonate with you? And when did you realize that Cara Golding was undaunted? And what does that mean? Yeah, you know, people used to say, we, I didn't even have, when I turned in my book manuscript, I didn't have a name for the book. Um, I was, you know, it was just Cara's book and for a long time. And then we had to come up with a name. And I mean, it's funny because I felt like it, it just, when people would, comment to me oftentimes they would comment to me something that they didn't feel they were you Mm -hmm. know that I was but they weren't and uh and so you know people would say persistent relentless like I mean even as a young kid people would say that to me I just I laughed at life I did all these things and people would say you know you live undaunted and Mm -hmm. And it was, but I never thought of that as the book title and actually, you know, Undaunted has a period after it. And it's, it's interesting because it was, um, it my, we were laying out the book cover and sort of helping our publisher and my husband, who's been our chief operating officer, and I've been married to him for 27 years. I mean, he was kind of looking at it and he put a period on the end of Undaunted. And I was like, there's a period on the end of it. And he said, yeah, I know. Do you like it? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, because I speak that way and I'll, I'll say, you know, live undaunted and, and, you know, and just be that way or whatever it is. And, and it's interesting because I think people who understand it, um, people who 
um, kind of are undaunted understand it. People who want to be undaunted understand it. There's no, you don't need anything more in a sentence, right? You just, yeah. it's, it's a statement about, you know, it, it's a decision. It's very powerful. It's, um, it's a great word. And so when we came upon that, just like when we came upon hints, um, that's when I thought, yeah, like, it's so good. I love that. And I love how intentional and like one worded each of your companies are. Like I love hint, like really speaks for itself and undaunted, I feel like really speaks for itself. But how do you feel like people can live a more undaunted life? How can they kind of adopt this lifestyle? I think we live in a world where, you know, life is just a little too prescriptive and Mm -hmm. it's, um, and it's definitely, uh, you know, it takes a lot. It takes a mindset to kind of get yourself into a mode where you're sort of undoing what you've learned in order to go out and be undaunted. So we're supposed to, you know, like place in a, in a competition, or we're supposed to, um, you know, go to the best schools. We're supposed to work at the best places. We're supposed to live a certain way, whatever it is, when actually that's not necessarily what brings happiness. That's Mm -hmm. not necessarily what's right for you. And I think a lot of people realize this later on in life and then try and figure out how do they backtrack and how do they, you know, live undaunted. And again, what I said earlier, it's a conscious decision to do that and really decide for yourself that this is what you're going to do, whether that's, you know, changing jobs or becoming an entrepreneur or not becoming an entrepreneur or, you know, doing what's right for you versus, um, versus trying to, you know, keep climbing a ladder and not stopping and absorbing kind of what you're learning about yourself. And, and I think that that's a really important piece in everyone's journey. Um, and really living undaunted is that you're going to have trials, you're going to have fears, you're going to have failures along the way. Um, the most successful, the most hap- the most happy content people do, but it's really about, um, you know, embracing the journey, recognizing that, you know, it's all you, right? And and that's the only one that can live that. So, um, so that's the most important thing I think to remember from the undaunted journey. If you could go back to the beginning of your journey with Hint, what do you think was the best decision you ever made? Best decision? Uh, Probably having my my partner uh, Theo uh, join me, and that was by accident as well. Um, so Theo was an intellectual property Silicon Valley tech attorney, um, mm-hmm. just being a nice guy, helping me deliver cases in the early days, and then you know finally decided to get himself a business card and start helping me as uh, we're trying to manage four kids and um, wow. four yeah. young under a six and (laughs) and start a company he was like oh my god like Kara as he always said you're gonna kill me like this is this is crazy (laughs) but I think you know we're very yin and yang and in life and and I think being able to have a you know co-founder and a partner that really um can be supportive that can on days when you're having a rough day, a challenging day that they can say, it's not really that bad, you know, Mm -hmm. and like lift you in some way that that was probably one of the best decisions. I love that. And I love like almost this partnership that you were able to create and where you're able to bring a lot of things to the table, but your partner was able to bring a lot of things to the table to build something even stronger, which is awesome. As we begin to wrap up the podcast, we always ask our guests a couple of ending questions, but to start us off today, um, what do you love about yourself today? Love about myself. Um, you know, that, that I've taken risks and I've taken chances. And I think that more than anything, one of the stories I talk about in the book is that, you know, I, I never viewed all of these risks and chances that I'm taking as things that, you know, maybe my kids would 
um, benefit from in some way. Um, you know, it was just this crazy idea that I was starting a beverage company. And again, they were babies. They were mm-hmm. not even sort of fully recognizing it. But I think being a female, uh, you know, entrepreneur and, and leader, what I've realized is that I have two boys is I shared with you earlier and two girls and I think that they've seen, you know, that women can actually run companies, first of all, even Mm -hmm. though we're a minority group of of CEOs out there, we can also uh, switch industries. We can work with our spouses. I mean, it just depends. There's no one journey that I think is a set way. So I think I'm, I'm proud that I feel like I've shown them I think the most important thing is to find something today that you really want to be doing, that you want to be working on. And that can change too. You may, you know, want to be a tech executive and then you want to be, you want to start your own thing later or reverse that. I mean, you just figure it out, do, do something and try. I I, absolutely, I cannot, cannot resonate with that more. I think everyone listening feels that to whatever degree is going on in their life as well. On that same note, we'd love to ask you, what is something that you're grateful for today? I think I'm grateful for uh, just life, you know, just to be able to do what we do today. I mean, one of the things I was sharing with somebody earlier is that uh, my podcast, The Kara Golden Show, has, uh, you know, it has listeners from all over the world. And there's a lot of places where being an entrepreneur um, being a female entrepreneur is um, not as plentiful, if if at all. And I think that being able to kind of share stories of being an entrepreneur with others all over the world, I'm really grateful to be able to do that. I love that. Um, and to end us off, what does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur? To be able to create. I, I'm I'm a creator, and I think that being able to find holes in the market and solve problems. Um, when you start a mission-based company, as I have to, it's really tough to imagine not starting mission-based companies, right? It's just yeah. a, it's, uh, if you can do something that actually helps people, um, I mean, that's, that's incredibly powerful. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Wow. I'm sure we can all kind of take a hint and have some hint. Um, I guess our last question truly is, what is your favorite flavor of hint? I love cherry. Um, I love them all, but cherry is probably my go-to. Amazing. I love it. And for our audience who want to continue to follow your journey and follow Hint's journey, I know you guys have some amazing products, not only like not only waters, but also um, like sanitizers and so many sunscreens, which is really awesome. So um, super exciting to see Hint grow. But where can um, we continue to follow your journey and Hint's journey? Yeah, well, Kara Golden um, at, on all social platforms. It's um, with an I, Golden. And uh, also, Hint can, you can find it at drinkhint.com. It's at all stores um, throughout the country. And then, if you're interested in the podcast, it's the Kara Golden Show. And the book is called Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. It's on Audible. It's also um, available at bookstores and Amazon nationwide. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on, Kara. We had a great time chatting with you. Thanks so much. That wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope hearing from this founder helped you learn more about your entrepreneurial journey and their entrepreneurial journey. If you liked this episode, subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to this podcast now. Even better, please leave us a five-star review and share your thoughts on the podcast. Want to get in touch, send a question, or suggest a guest? We read every one of our emails and DMs, so please feel free to reach out to us at our email address or on any social media platform at the Entrepreneurs Network. You can also check out our show notes for more ways to chat. The Entrepreneurs Podcast is just one of the shows under the Entrepreneurs Network. Each podcast show explores its own niche community of women entrepreneurs. To explore our other shows, be sure to check us out on our socials and on our website at entrepreneursnetwork.com. 
Thank you so much for our amazing team at the Entrepreneurs Network, but especially our podcast producers helping to make this episode come to light. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again next week.